Indian Story Book by Richard Wilson Story 1 Rama's Quest A Tale of Sita and the Friend of Living Creatures Parts 1 and 2 Part 1 Life was indeed fair and beautiful in the city of Ayodhya, which was of matchless situation and shone resplendent with burnished gold, and all its people were good and beautiful, rich and happy. The streets of the city were broad and open, lined with elegant shops and lordly houses flashing in the sunlight with gems of unknown value. Food and water were plentiful, the sweetest music resounded on all sides, and the city was famous throughout the land for its holy men. The workmen rejoiced in the skill of their hands, the soldiers held the honor of Ayodhya dearer than life itself, while over all ruled King Dasharatha, full of virtue, wisdom, and valor. But there was one deep shadow in this city of sunshine. The king had no son to succeed him. One day he consulted the priests, who told him that the sacrifice of a horse would win for him the favor of the gods, and without delay preparations were made for the ceremony, which was conducted with greatest care, with the result that the noble king, to his unbounded joy, was promised the reward not of one son, but four. In due time, four sons were born to King Dasharatha, and the name given to the first was Rama, who grew up to become a youth of more than ordinary strength, skill, bravery, and beauty. One day he met a holy man who told him that at the time of his birth the gods had created a very large number of bears and monkeys who would one day be useful to him in the work which he was destined to do. On another day, a priest came to him and told him that his friends, who formed a community of hermits, were greatly troubled by a band of demons, and that they would be glad of his help against their dreadful foes. At first, the king was unwilling to let the boy go on such a dangerous expedition, but after a while he was persuaded to give his consent, and Rama set out at once in the company of his brother Lakshmana and a friend who had magic powers. The land through which the travellers journeyed was thinly peopled, and for the most part covered with forests in which there were many hermitages, and before they had covered much ground, Rama was asked to challenge a dreadful ogress named Tarika, who lived in the dark recesses of a wood. Rama twanged the huge bow in the hearing of the monster, who was greatly enraged at the sound and at once showed fight. Her method of attack was to raise a blinding, choking dust round about her opponent, and under cover of this to shower down heavy stones upon him. The brothers were, however, so skilful with their bows that they intercepted these stones in mid-air with their arrows, while at the same time they shot away the hands, nose, and ears of the ogress. Then she changed her shape again and again, baffling the efforts of the brothers for a time, but at last they found her in the shape of a serpent and laid her dead at their feet. Then they went on their way again, rejoicing with the praises of the hermit singing in their ears. This was not the only combat in which the brothers and the magician engaged during their journey through the forest lands. But in each fight they were successful chiefly because they lived sparingly, exercised constantly, took great interest in the history of the places which they passed, and performed their religious duties with great care and unfailing regularity. Thus, living a healthy life in the open air, they were able to meet with confidence of victory any danger which arose. At last, the wanderers came to the kingdom of King Mithila, who had a lovely daughter named Sita, of whom many wonderful tales were told, none more strange than that of the manner of her birth. For it was told when the king was ploughing the ground at a festival, the beautiful princess had sprung, full-grown, radiant, and smiling, from a furrow which the monarch had turned. Further, it was said that Sita would become the bride of any warrior who would bend the huge and ponderous bow which the king kept in his armory, and which had belonged to no less a personage than the great god Shiva. Rama and his companions soon heard these stories, and naturally were very curious to see both the princess and the bow. And as soon as the introduction to the king had been effected by the magician, Rama asked for the privilege of trying his strength on the wonderful weapon. 
so it was brought from the armory on a cart with eight wheels drawn along by a great company of stalwart men rama raised it in his hands bent it and broke it to the accompaniment of such a deafening sound that the whole company rolled head over heels in consternation and astonishment all of course except the magician and the royal company who were much too dignified for such an expression of wonder the king could not deny his beautiful daughter to such a hero if indeed he had wished to do so which he did not arrangements were therefore made for the wedding festival and brides were also found for the three brothers of rama who had been sent for post haste as soon as the prince had proved his strength with the bow after the marriage which was conducted with equal solemnity and rejoicing the brothers returned to ayodhya and the magician took his way alone to the mountains to spend his time in prayer fasting and contemplation part two the years went by swiftly enough for rama was happy in his wife and his friends then came a time of woe and trouble due to the jealousy of an angry woman the king was growing old and wished to hand over the cares of government to rama indeed he began to make preparations for doing so when he was arrested by the anger of one of his wives the mother of prince bharata who himself had no desire to live in enmity with his beloved brother rama the idol of the city the king endeavored to appease the jealousy of the offended queen but she demanded that rama should be banished to the forests for a period of fourteen years while her own son bharata should be made ruler in place of his father the old king was so much under her influence that he was forced to consent and then to his further grief he was told that rama with true greatness of soul had undertaken to go into voluntary exile in order that the peace of the happy city might be preserved the people of ayodhya were filled with grief when they heard the news but they were powerless in the matter and rama made his preparations without further delay he tried to persuade his wife to remain behind but with a gentle smile she asked proudly what are the terrors of the forest to me what are the privations of exile so long as we are together and when she saw that rama was unwilling to place such a burden upon her she burst into tears threw herself into his arms and finally persuaded her husband to let her share his exile then the laughing lakshman too came forward and offered to go with them his offer was accepted and the three made ready to leave the city in which they had enjoyed such happiness their dignity and devotion did not make the slightest appeal to the heart of the jealous queen who herself brought to them the suits of bark which they were to wear in the forest the two princes put on their new dress without remark but sita was unwilling to exchange her bright silks for such a rough and uncomfortable costume and after a time it was arranged that she would wear the coat of bark over her silken raiment then the three exiles took tender leave of the broken-hearted king and made respectful obeisance to the jealous queen while rama told her that not she but the will of the gods sent them forth as exiles from his father's house and that in due time the wise purpose of heaven would be clear to the eyes of all the king as a final favor ordered that the exiles should be conveyed from the city in a royal chariot and before long they were on their way taking with them only their arms and armor a husbandman's hoe and a basket bound in hide such was the grief of the people at their departure that the dust raised by the wheels of the chariot was laid by their copious tears End.